I love painting pumpkins. I think it's the bright orange color combined with the wonderful shapes and interesting shadows. I just painted this one and I'm going to show you step by step in this video how you can paint it too. As an extra bonus, I also share a few tips for getting accurate values in your watercolor paintings. So watch to the end to hear more about that. All right, let's get started. Welcome to my studio. My name is Chris. This channel is all about tools, tips, and tutorials for growing in watercolor. In addition to the full length tutorial in this video, I also have a growing collection of free resources and courses on my website at studio.chrisdebruin.com. I encourage you to follow the links in the description below to accelerate your growth in this amazing medium of watercolor. Now let's jump into the tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to paint this wonderful fall subject, a pumpkin. Uh, this is taken in my backyard. Uh, here's the reference image I'll be using, and you can uh, download that via a link that you will find in the description below. Before I got started, I went ahead, as I usually do, and did a little value study. This is a three value value study either light, medium, or dark. The entire subject has been simplified to one of those three values. As you can see, looking at this alongside the um, reference image, the color reference image, you can see my highest highlights are on the left of the pumpkin and some areas here at the top, uh, the left side of the stem. Uh, the um, darkest areas are the background, which even though it's got lots of different values in it, I'm gonna make, keep it pretty dark so it has a nice contrast with the pumpkin itself. I'm, I've decided to make the bench that the pumpkin's sitting on a middle value uh, range. And then, of course, the right side of the pumpkin with the big shadow is the darkest values. So this is my map. I encourage you to always do a value study like this before starting a painting. If you want to learn more about values, about how to evaluate a reference image, doing a value map and a, re a value study like this, watch my free course online at studio.chrisdebruin.com. I'll leave a specific link to this free course called Mastering Values on my website, and you can learn more about the importance of values, seeing them, reproducing them, and creating value studies like that. Okay, so that value study is my map, along with the reference image, which you can see here. I've got this, um, if you haven't already done so, check uh, again, um, Check out the reference image, a link to the reference image on my, in the description below, and trace this image onto your paper. Another thing I encourage my students to do prior to getting started is to choose your color palette. I've decided for this painting to use a warm red, pyro red, a cool red, this is Quinn Rose, a nice middle of the road yellow, this is uh, Hansa yellow medium, a warm blue, dark, dark warm blue, which is indenthrone blue. It's like ultramarine or French ultramarine, but darker. And I'm using that with the yellow to mix my greens, which there are a lot of in the background. And then I wanna have a earth tone on my palette, so I'm using raw sienna, which I'll mix in to neutralize some of these colors. So those are the only, what is that? One, two, three, four, five colors that I'm gonna use. Of course, I'll be mixing them in a variety of ways. In preparation for my first wash, I've mixed up a variety of colors. Again, just using those four, uh, five colors that I just pointed out to you, I've mixed a very loose washes. This would be tea consistency, possibly up to coffee consistency, very diluted. And uh, I've got a variety of, of greens that I've mixed up here with my indenthrone blue here. I want some pretty dark, pretty dark greens like this into some lighter greens with more yellow in them. For that background, I'm going to have a bunch of orange, light, light orange, real light, light wash for the pumpkin and then some other brownish colors and even purpley colors for the bench. And uh, so let's get started. I've mixed up the, the paint here. I'm going to start. I've got my board here at a slight angle. Maybe I'm going to go a little bit more of an angle here for this first wash to let the uh, wash move down the board. Starting in one corner, 
background is going to be very um, abstract, not a lot of definition of shapes. Uh, so I'm just going to move kind of between a, a bluish, um, dark blue, uh, bluish green, dark, to more yellowish like you see I'm using here. Not kind of looking at the reference image but not being too concerned. It's a little bit more uh, yellowish as it comes down here near the grass. And it's um, going to do this very quickly. A lot of water. Not worried about. Just wanted to capture some of the undertones that I see here. I even see a little bit of a brownish mixed in to some of those green leaves in the background. So I'll mix in some of that raw sienna getting down kind of coming up right up next to the pumpkin. And uh, I'm using a big thirsty brush. This brush is my Quint Princeton Neptune number no. six quill. Love it. Okay, there's my background, how quickly I could do that. Now I'm gonna take some of my raw sienna and actually, I kind of like this purpley color with a little bit of my Quinn, my yellow, and maybe a bit of my blue, neutralized, very neutralized color. And um, do one side, kind of the dark side of the stem here. Got a bit more of a gray in it, so I'll do that there. Okay. Right side of that stem's pretty light, so I'm lifting up some of that color, just getting the shape right. Now, I'm going to take my very light orange. Very yellow on this side here. So I've kind of grabbed a bit more yellow and uh, keep some of this very light in here where this big highlight is. If it has a little yellow in it, that's fine. Take my warmer red and mix that in with that yellow to get more of an orange. Can you see how quickly I'm doing a lot of this? Want a little less intense, so I'm bringing in more water on my brush. that. There we go. There's my pumpkin. Now into my more neutralized color for the bench here on the far left. Very quick, just real quick strokes there. Uh, at the bottom there, the orange is kind of leaking into that, but that's fine. More of my neutralized color back here. And now I want to go into a cooler color, so I'm going to bring in my cooler red, it's my Quinn Rose, some of this Indian Throne Blue, even more of that blue. And just come in here and do my nice, cool shadow here. So all of this is my shadow. There you go. Very loose, wet, first wash. Uh, I've covered everything with the general colors that I want in those areas. Very loose, soft edges, not defined, haven't worried about details. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and let this dry a bit 
before I come back and start putting in my middle value shapes. All right, my first wash is mostly dry. It's uh, a little bit slightly cool to the touch, but I want to move into this background because it's still a little bit damp inside there. The, the colors might blend a bit, but I am also going to use a much thicker consistency of paint here. So I now have uh, I now have a green mixed up with Intense Rowan Blue and Hansa Yellow Medium, very dark because the dark the background is very dark as you remember from my value study I wanted the background to be very dark in contrast to the pumpkin so I've mixed up a very dark value greens to a yellowish green here nice thick um, milk to cream consistency and the background is you know somewhat of a just an abstract set of shapes and so I'm going I'm not going to spend a lot of time um, trying to paint you know individual leaves or anything like that just kind of get a sense for the background coming up to um, the edge of the pumpkin maybe loosen put a little water on the brush and loosen some of those edges soften them um, I want to have very variegated washes here so I'm going to go from um, kind of the colors I'm putting down I'll go pick up a bit more blue like I just did and um, We'll drop that in, then go grab some of the yellow. I'm going to maybe let some of the lighter colors that I put down in the first wash to just shine through. Uh, maybe drop some other uh, orangey and raw sienna colors in there just to get a variety. Variegated wash. Okay. And again, you can just take that and just, if you want some variegation, var variety, just drop some other colors in there. Okay, I'm going to come around. I'm going to keep going, working the background only up against the stem. Uh, this is giving me the dark edge along the stem, the dark edge along the right side of the pumpkin, down to here. Grab even darker color, more blue. Mix that um, blue in with some colors already on the palette. I don't want it to be pure blue. That would probably be a little too shocking. But at the edge of that... Um, uh, the edge of the bench there but now I see it's more green lighter green along here so I'll come back in with some of that and again I've got some leaves back in there like some kind of bush so maybe kind of represent that and um, a bit more of a yellow uh, in here some of this I don't want to um, try to attempt I'm not trying to attempt to replicate the bush back there or the um, the details of the background that would only distract from the pumpkin the, the star of the show the focus of this is the pumpkin so I'm really just trying to get some texture and the sense of some kind of background back up in here uh, it's cooler near the top gets warmer as it comes down to the bottom so there you go there's my background Next, I'm going to, I think I'm going to, I want a pretty hard edge here and here. And so I'm going to let this, well, all right, I see an area. So I'm going to kind of work around um, the pumpkin to some areas that uh, don't touch. And I can see here, I've got an area on the right side of, the stem that is a, a bluish gray. I've got that mixed up here, Intense Rome Blue, with some of these other, uh, that orange and green there, kind of neutralize it a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that in um, because I've got a fairly thick paint, so it's not, um, it's, uh, I'm painting wet onto dry here, so mostly dry slightly damp but it's not because it's thick enough paint it's not going to spread and um, it's going to come down in here leaving some lines some of the highlight textures of the of the stem top of the stem is much lighter in value so I'm just not going to paint that leave it see I'm letting that first wash shine through that, that works great um, here, 
down into here and here. Now, this is my big middle value shape. I want to connect some of these middle values. So now I'm going to come back in, get some of my orange mixed up for this right side of the pumpkin. It's pretty dark. So I've mixed that up. I'm just going to actually touch the bead where I was doing that dark and just let them kind of blend a little bit and come out into here and get this right hand side. Now I have to be I'm using pretty thick paint, so I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a blend with that background green, but not too bad. And uh, this, but this is a pretty dark area over here. I'm going to put in some more of the red to darken it, both kinds of red, even some of the cooler red will darken it even more. And uh, come in here and uh, I'm looking at my reference image and my map, my value study map, because they're both informing me of the shapes, the value shapes that I see. Again, I'm not, I'm not seeing pumpkin. I'm, I'm really not. I'm just seeing these value shapes. Um, okay. And you're doing a lot all at once, quite, quite, quite obviously. You're, you're um, trying to get the color matching to a certain extent. You're following your maps for your values, uh, squinting at your reference image and But by doing the, this value study, it kind of simplifies it. So if I, if I just follow the pattern there in my value study, it really simplifies the process. I, I can not think about quite as many things all at once, if that makes sense. Um, getting down in here, I see a bit more of the yellow kind of shining through down here. It's reflecting off something and gets to be more of a orangey, yellowy orange as I move across this way. And I've got some darker lines here. There we go. It's the edge of that pumpkin there on the far right side. All right. I like it. Okay. Now the shadow starts in here. And the shadow is very bluish, almost purpley. So I'm going to take some of my cool red that I have. I'll mix it in with some of this dark that I already have on the palette. Um, yeah, you can definitely use the colors you've already mixed and just kind of push them in the right direction. Uh, it's a little too purple, I think. I need more blue and maybe a bit of the green. Sorry, yeah, yeah, some of this green, will, which has yellow in it, will neutralize so it's not quite so blue or, or red. Uh, all right, so I've got a nice neut purpley neutral color with which now I'm going to come in here and just do this shadow. And I am painting right up against the edge of that wet that I already have. And I'm not afraid of that blending because that's going to give me this gorgeous mix of colors. And it kind of makes sense that there's an orangey glow in that um, dark shadow because it's reflecting off the side. The orange of the pumpkin is reflecting into that. So I'm coming out here. Could even use a bigger brush, but I don't want to switch at this point. So I'm just using this brush and coming through there. There we go. There's my big shadow. All right. I'm liking it. I'm, I'm gotten it. I'm 60% of the way done here. All right. Um, I see a few, few things I missed. I'll let that shadow now. Don't mess with the shadow anymore. Just let it be. I'm going to come back up here, uh, looking at some of these areas up in here. I didn't get dark enough, so um, I'm going to add those in there. Maybe uh, a little bit there. I think I might switch my, my techniques here a little bit now. Kind of do some um, glazing um, up in here. Put down some different value and color 
and then get my brush wet clean and just draw those colors out and um, do that along up in here. That's a That. I'm gonna charge in and drop some other colors. There's some textures that come out this way. But again, I don't want them to be all hard edges, so I'll uh, drag, use a wet brush clean and kind of uh, pull away some of that color, soften the edges. I feel like in here I need some glazing. Uh, this is pretty dry. Even what I already just put down, that darker value is already pretty dry. Um, so I just want to get a nice medium valued um, mixture wash of, of the orange and come back in over some of these areas I did in the first wash because there's, there's a little bit more of a gradual change in the colors. I almost had a bloom there, but I caught it as it started going down in there. Okay, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna look at bigger shapes here. I'm kind of getting caught up in the smaller shapes, I'm making up a bit more of a yellow one. I see a really big bit of yellowish here, up to there, that I didn't catch before. So I'm in big brush strokes, bold. When you find yourself messing around with little tiny details, little tiny brush strokes, you're probably, you're probably getting lost in the weeds. And you need to be a little bit, just step back, get a bigger brush, make some bigger, bolder statements. Um, that's what I find anyways. I see maybe some bigger shapes here, there, alright, alright I'm not going to mess with this anymore, I'm going to let this dry, then I'm going to come back and evaluate it, uh, once it's completely dry and see if I want to add any more just final dark details that I missed in a few places. But otherwise, I like the boldness and freshness of this painting of a pumpkin. Let's let it dry. All right, I've allowed the painting to dry completely from that last step, and I want to give you a little close-up of the painting at this point. I absolutely love what the mixing of colors is doing here along the edge of the pumpkin. Uh, again, that's something only that can happen with watercolor. Uh, you have to be patient with that as well letting it dry, stepping away, letting the colors kind of blend on their own. Sometimes it, it takes a few minutes for that blending to really occur. So I encourage you to be patient with your watercolor and, and allow watercolor to do its own magic with the mixing of colors because sometimes you can get really beautiful results. Now, I've also evaluated the values that I've painted so far. And one way to do that is to take a picture on your cell phone and then turn that picture, let me put it, uh, turn it into grayscale like you see I've done here. It's not showing up very well on the camera. So take a picture of your painting, turn it into a grayscale version, and you will see where your values are not correct. For example, let me point out one example, it's really obvious. If you look in this uh, grayscale picture of the painting at this point, you'll see that this area here is quite a bit lighter um, than what it appears to be in the color version of the painting because this dark purpley color appears to our eye to be dark but when you turn it into grayscale you realize actually it's not that dark it's it's not nearly dark enough if you look at the reference image here you can see that this area underneath the pumpkin is one of the darkest areas of the whole painting so that's convinced me that i need to come back and do a little bit more darkening uh, adding some more darkest of the values in um, the shadow and even across the side, I think of the pumpkin, what we call the core shadow uh, here along this side is like the darkest area of the form shadow of, of the pumpkin. So let's do that. Enough talking. So here's my, I'm mixing up my Indian Throne Blue with some of the colors already on my palette. This is wet on dry now and I'm just going to come in and really 
put in um, a nice dark shadow. It's really along there is the darkest area. Grab some more of that. Probably, I think I'll mix in a bit more of that red and even some of the other colors, just neutralize it a bit. Yeah, trying to get it a bit thicker there. All right. And I like that. Again, that's that darkest area. Then as you move away from the subject that's casting the shadow, the, 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 the shadow gets lighter. So with a wet, clean, wet brush, just going to um, thin out, pull out some of that pigment and just get a little more gradual change uh, out, in, out into this area here. Also see kind of a change in color maybe. Well, I don't think I'm gonna mess with that. I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. That created a much crisper edge and bigger contrast there. Now, in addition to that, this what I call the form shadow, the shape of the pumpkin is darkest here in the middle. So I need to mix up some of my red, yellow, get a nice orange color maybe even take in some of my other, just kind of neutralize it a bit with some of that raw sienna. Even some of that, yeah, that cooler red. It's almost a brownie red orange now. And now I'm going to come in and kind of emphasize some of this value here. And it kind of comes right into this shadow, comes here, comes in here. And I think that gives it much more accurate value shape to what we see there. Now I'm going to again wet clean brush. I don't want all hard edges. I don't want it to be too too um, abrupt. Sorry, I can't talk and paint at the same time sometimes, um, but I get you get the idea. You kind of see what I'm doing there. There we go. Even a little bit of that blue in there, maybe. Yeah. Kind of putting some texture in there a bit more, and there's some textures that come up in here as well that. I like that. Got a glow, the glow on this yellow side, some reflected light, but this darker shadow down the center. It's kind of working for me there. Now, also if I come in here, I think even a smaller brush, a bit finer tip, take some of this purpley dark that I have going on here. And I really want to emphasize some of this side of the darkest side of my stem. Um, there we go. And some of that can pull into over here as well. There we go. Do 
these are just the fine details you're doing at the very end of the painting. Um, they, can, they can cause certain uh, details to just jump off, um, and, you know, kind of come to life a little bit as um, create some contrast, value contrast. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. And uh, yeah, I kind of like that. There's a little. So now I've I've darkened this shadow and I've darkened that core shadow along the center and I've darkened the stem. I would say those are the darkest areas of the painting and I think I've emphasized those better. I'm going to just leave the background the way it is. I'm not, I've got, I don't want a lot of detail in the background. Uh, maybe I see, um, You know, something could be a little darker in here. There's this little shape, right? Kind of in the indent there of that, and some of these. Lost and found edges, that's where you just, this line, for example, coming through here, I just darken it in a couple little spots, but not all the way through. You do not want to create a solid line through there. It won't look right. There you go. I think we're good. I'm going to let that dry and add my signature and call it good. All right, I'm done with the painting. I'm going to add my signature. I usually choose a nice contrasting color, uh, usually a color for my signature that's actually in the painting already, just for kind of some color unity. I'm um, using kind of basically that same as that, that purpley color over there. Uh, it's kind of not thick enough because it's kind of going to thicken this baby up. It's, Having a hard time here. Okay, gotta add your signature though. Gotta work on your signature. What do you want your signature to look like? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of have the same way I do it in all of them. There you go. There's my signature. Okay, add your signature. And here you can see the two grayscale pictures. I took another grayscale picture after I did these darker values. And now you can see them side by side. You really can see how adding that extra dark shadow in the cast shadow and in the core form shadow has really added something to the painting. So encouragement in this video, evaluate your paintings using a grayscale image if you're, when you're you know, halfway done and see if you need to add darker values. All right, I hope you found this video to be helpful. And uh, I try to get something like this up about once a week. So you might want to subscribe uh, so you are notified when I put up a new one. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.